Tonight we're crisscrossing the River Thames, searching for a house within an hour's commute of Reading. Our buyers are prepared to sell out a cool half a million pounds this weekend. But only if we can find them the right home. Joe and Simon Miles couldn't believe how much their North London home had increased in value. They'd been renting in Henley-on-Thames for four months and they'd really like to live here. Our ideal house would have four bedrooms, it would have two reception rooms, hopefully big a nice kitchen. den. Big kitchen. Big kitchen, yeah. somewhere you can eat in. Jo's very particular. She runs a picture framing business from home and has found the time to view over 40 houses. Well, I think we haven't found a house yet because we're waiting for a house that we walk into and it says buy me straight away. We haven't been willing to compromise at this point. I think we're just looking for the perfect house. We are. Looking for the perfect house. Simon works in nearby Reading, part of England's Silicon Valley, surrounded by unspoilt countryside. Demand is greater than supply, so prices are up. This week, the stakes may be higher, but the rules are just the same. And if you need to buy any property, you need to know how to play the game. So, three days of intensive house hunting. Our challenge, to use all our expertise to find them a house they'll fall in love with. I think when it comes to location, I'm more flexible than Joe. I imagine the internal space is going to be more important to you. Uh, but location as well is very important, because I don't want to feel isolated and alone. <laughs> <laughs> Despite having £500,000 to spend, Henley can't offer a single house that fits their bill for that price. So we're moving away from here, but staying within commuting range for Simon. Boxford is where young Kirsty grew up. It's an idyllic village with a pub and a shop nearby. This thatched cottage fits their criteria. Four bedrooms, workshop, and all within budget. And the good news is, Kirsty doesn't live in the village anymore. Well, what do you make of this? It looks surely like a million pound house, doesn't it? It does. It's, yeah. it's very attractive. It could be yours for £435,000. Well. A timber-framed house, it still oozes character from its 16th century origins. And Joe's commute to work could be less than 12 seconds. But this is what we considered for your yeah, work, work room. room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is nice and bright and light, which I like. And I don't know about you, but quite nice to be able to leave it at the end of the day and, and leave your back, work yeah. behind yeah. you. Simon and I explore inside. There's one at the back, which would really be the second bedroom. OK, it's a decent sized room, isn't it? And a piece of wow. resistance. Wow. That's a great room. This is a good thing that uh, the occupants of this house haven't painted these beams. You do see that quite a lot. And beams are really the, the guts of the house. They're the living, breathing parts of the house. Sometimes they're the moving parts of the house. I quite like this stonework effect in, in that. That's quite nice. It's fantastic. I was thinking initially, oh, let's knock down that wall and make it into one big kitchen. Then I remembered that it's grade two listed. Ah, right. And there are restrictions on what you're allowed to do. Internally as well as Internally outside. as well as externally. A good thatch roof will last more than 25 years. Now, if you're looking at a thatch cottage, take a careful look at the ridge across the top, because that'll be the first place that'll show any signs of rot. If you need to replace the entire roof on an average size cottage, it would cost about £8,000. You also need to think that your insurance premiums will be about 15 to 20 per cent higher than on a standard house. I like the floor, I like the floorboards, I think they're quite good. Yeah. Nice. The views are brilliant. Yeah. They really are. I suspect I'm going to be more keen on this than Joe is. Does thatch appeal? No. Whoops. Well, let's keep the rolling countryside, but find something a little different. Whitchurch on Thames is a 20 minute commute for Simon and just across the river are the important shops and village life for Joe. We found this 18th century blacksmith's forge. Four bedrooms, four bathrooms. It's full of original features. The price, £425,000. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's really a, an extraordinary space. First impression of this room is just, whoa, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Room. It's a fantastic yeah, it's room. The price means Joe and Simon would have enough cash left to really make this place their own. I sense more reticence on Joe's part. Yeah, yeah, I am a bit. Um, because of? I actually have seen the details of this house before. 
Uh huh. And yeah. shush, everyone, don't panic. Uh, and uh, I didn't even think about coming to see it. That might have been a terrible mistake. The only thing I think that's really useful is a floor plan. Because pictures are often just photographs of other people's furniture in a bad light. Yeah, I'd need to see the rest of the house, it's, I think. It's quite interesting because this isn't a circumstance that happens to us very often. What She's do you end? to see the rest of the no, house. No, I know, but just let me just <laughs> ask Joe, let me ask before <laughs> we go and see the rest of the house, what did you think was wrong with the rest of the accommodation? I think they've only got, is there only a couple of bedrooms? Or is, is the kitchen very small? Uh, four bedrooms, actually. And the kitchen doesn't look small to me. In there is the oven. Gosh. Looking like a brick wall. Yeah. And this, looking like a beam, is the extractor fan. Oh, very cleverly done, isn't Fantastic it? Fantastic use. The forge has four pink bathrooms. <laughs> pink. And two staircases to the four bedrooms. This is the only room in the house where you really get a sense of the not being great ceiling height. Yeah. I'm thinking possibly we could sort of board over the beams, almost get rid of them. It's rather like being in a whale's stomach, you know, you've got the sort of ribs hanging over you. If you put plasterboard up, two, three hundred pounds, not at all difficult to do, and it would give it more of a, of a consistent feel, and, and it might feel bigger. Get rid of the beams? Sacrilege, Kirsty. Now, I thought this double garage would be an ideal workshop. What about Joe? Yeah, I think it has got potential to use it as a studio room. Possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worth, I mean, you, you, I think you've probably got to, um, you've got to be more excited than that in order for it to be worth doing. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't excite me terribly as a room at the moment. And the house? It doesn't really do it for me at the moment. Take a look at this, it's the old blacksmith's branding panel. Would have been here working away, practising his brands on this door, it's excellent. Now, how are we doing here? Well, I'm not convinced we're going terribly well. I think Joe's certainly got a vision to see through the work that would be required here, but I don't think that they love the house enough to get in here and do the work. I'm also beginning to see why they're finding choosing a house quite so difficult. That's yeah, fantastic. Is, yeah, that is just... It's really beamy, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah, but you don't notice know. because they're not on top of you. God damn, they're 20 feet above us. You don't notice them. Mm. Now you've seen it all and had a good look, what do you think? It's interesting, but I don't think it is really. For me, it isn't anyway. I don't know if it's for you. It's more so for you, I suppose. More so for me. It? More so yeah. for me. Next, the neighbouring village of Pangbourne. We've discovered a house that's been on the market for just one day. So how do you fancy a great stretch of the River Thames all to yourself? Your own mooring and little garden, plus this wonderful house. And amazingly, it falls within the budget of Simon and Joe at half a million pounds. Now, the bad news is this. Sandwiched between the riverfront and the garden and a fabulous house is this road. I don't know, will it be a hit or a miss? This riverside house was built in the 1890s and has four huge reception rooms, four big bedrooms and a double garage that could be made into a workshop. Inside, the Victorian features remain. It's very well proportioned. But will the road be the deal breaker? I would have said the finest living room we've ever been in on making the programme. And bearing in mind you've got three other living rooms, it's pretty <laughs> impressive stuff. Not kidding. Fabulous fireplace. Look at the intricacy, that the, the work and the detail that's gone in there. Which Were they originally painted like that? There was a time, late Victorian, when colour was used just about everywhere. Yeah. We're used to more Puritan plaster or white cornices, but yes, a lot of them might wow. well have been painted. It's not only the period features that are interesting. It's That's possibly the, the biggest bath I've ever seen. Yeah. It's you can slide down into it. Now, I love balconies, and not only for the view out, but for the view up. You can get a real good look at the roof, which is in excellent condition and the guttering, which isn't in quite such excellent condition. Look, it's blocked and full of it, yuck. Ugh. That means that the water's gonna build up and overflow and cause damp in the house. Such an easy thing to rectify, and yet such a common problem. This has got everything we wanted. This has got the high ceilings, it's got great windows, it's bright, it's airy, it's... No, I think it's great. Joe doesn't sound convinced, 
The problem is that road, and while the house may be great, they're not prepared to compromise on a quiet location. It's getting late, and Joe and Simon have got masses to be thinking about. We've still got more house hunting to do tomorrow, and one location is going to really stretch the imagination.